What about all the bills that were introduced by the Christian right, American Christians, under the premise of religious freedom? Anti-gay sentiment has only grown stronger in the face of progressive change and is going to continue to grow. And that's why I'm concerned with marking this just as an act of Islamic terror on American soil. This is an attack against the LGBT community and should be viewed as such. Don't be fooled by the rhetoric you will hear in the media this week, as people are going to definitely use this to push their own agendas. All right, that was the voice of Hassan Piker. He's an entertainment political journalist known for his explainer videos on the Young Turks. I'm sure you've seen them online. They're viral. Young Turks that provide detailed analysis on the top news stories of the day. Aside from covering pop culture news on the Young Turks Entertainment Channel, Pop Trigger Hassan is also a regular contributor on BuzzFeed and TMZ's Two Fab. And I think Hassan and I are going to have some different perspectives, but hopefully our interaction will be constructive. Hey, thanks so much for coming on to the line of fire, Hassan. Nice to meet you on the air. Oh, thank you for having me. Sure thing. Hey, be, before we discuss your comments about the Orlando massacre and your larger concerns with, with people like me who have a conservative Christian position, uh, I understand you're, you're, uh, you're fluent in, in Turkish. Obviously, the the bombing yesterday uh, strikes close to home. Uh, in your mind, does this have anything to do with Israel and Turkey renewing relationships and, and perhaps an attack for that reason? Well, yes, I actually covered it last night. And uh, just to clarify, I grew up in Turkey until I was 18. I'm, uh, I am personally agnostic. However, I grew up in a Muslim household and uh, my parents still live in Turkey. So, um, I am very familiar with the attacks. I'm very familiar with all the other attacks that have occurred on Turkish soil in the past six months. Four of them specifically, only one has been um, only one has been linked back to ISIS. It's Kurdish groups as well. Right. Now, um, that what's going on in Turkey is yes, like you said, it, uh, Turkey has a dramatic attitude shift uh, in their foreign policy as a uh, and this is a, a product of the new prime minister. And uh, there are a lot of economic and political factors that play into it. And they are, um, uh, Turkey is apologizing to Russia. Uh, the conversations have started. After six years, Turkey has basically amended its um, a position with Israel. Uh, trade agreements are happening. And, but most importantly, this is presenting a massive threat to ISIS in the Middle East because Turkey is a massive military force. And up until this point, um, Turkey had not viciously fought ISIS as much as other states have. Uh, and I think now that's going to change, and ISIS is aware of, that, aware of this. And that this was more of a retaliation for that, to Got instill it. fear upon the Turkish public. Got it. I, I appreciate that analysis. I had just gotten back from Australia uh, Monday night and just trying to catch up on life in general, so I hadn't read as widely uh, but as soon as soon as I saw the attack, I thought, boy, that's if ISIS is behind it, it's got to be related to the Israel situation. Uh, if it could have been planned that quickly. But uh, thanks for the input on that. All right, you uh, you and I would have fundamental differences on many things in terms of worldview, etc. We would agree that that every human being is is worthy of of protection. We would agree that that. Yes. Uh, every human, you know, that, that murder and acts of violence under no circumstances are ever justifiable, period, and that any theology that espoused that we would, we would denounce. But in your mind, there's a, a connection between what happened in Orlando and uh, conservative Christians opposing redefining of marriage, or do you say there's not a connection, but they're related issues to be addressed? I think, um, I don't think it's directly linked back to um, like Christian sentiment. So I actually didn't know what I was expecting, so I watched your Orlando coverage, and I thought it was quite fair up until the point that, um, and I thought it was you did a really good job denouncing the pastors that uh, spoke on uh, spoke uh, about the shooter and praised him for doing what he did and denounced the homosexuals because, or said that they were deserving of death, and we agree on that, uh, that life is more important than anything else. And But then you also followed it up with an interesting guest that you had on who was a former lesbian who uh, found Christ and uh, turned back into uh, heterosexuality, has marriage, and is happy. And I'm really happy for her. I'm happy that she's happy. But um, the fundamental disagreement that you and I would have on that is probably that we think homosexuality uh, is, a, uh, is a choice rather than um, 
something you're born with. Um, I happen to believe that it's, it's not something that you choose to be. I think it's something that you're born with. Now, the reason why I mention that is because um, the when you think about it as a choice and then you um, you think that this is infringing upon your religious freedom whenever we're passing whenever we're passing stuff like um, you know uh, uh, progressive movements like uh, uh, allowing gay marriage, legalizing gay marriage, or um, you know having uh, the LGBT community um, uh, covering the LGBT community extensively in the media. I feel like uh, this uh, there is this uh, this backlash in the face of progress. Um, uh, and it derives from, uh, our Christian, like derives from Christian, Judeo-Christian values, um, primarily coming from the conservative right. Mm -hmm. All right. So, so just so you understand plainly, uh, I don't believe that someone chooses to have homosexual desires. Uh, the oh, majority, okay. yeah, the majority of, of, of folks would, as far as they can tell, I, I look at Tammy's situations a little different, uh, the gal that was interviewed on the air, because she she identified as a heterosexual and then just with her involvement in the gay community began to identify as bisexual, then really bought into the fact that she was lesbian and thought, boy, maybe this is how she was born. But that's not the normal experience. The normal experience is as kids growing up, they start to realize they're different. They start to realize that they're not attracted to the opposite sex as their friends are. Many who are raised in faith homes go through a deep crisis over this and agonize over it. And, it, and they pray and they cry themselves to sleep wanting to change and they can't. So I don't, I don't believe there's reputable scientific evidence that anyone is born gay. I mean, it's still discussed, but that, to, that it's nothing that they chose, that it's very deeply ingrained inside of them. They can choose to act on it or not. But, no, I certainly mm -hmm. don't believe they, they, choose, uh, it, they choose to be gay. So, so he, let's, let's just talk about this constructively then. Um, so if, if I believe that it's fundamentally wrong to redefine marriage, for many reasons, yes, based on my religious beliefs, but along with that, for many societal reasons. And I say, okay, it's it's wrong to redefine marriage, so I'm going to oppose it in the courts if I can. I'm going to oppose mm -hmm. it, you know, uh, democratically. Yeah. And if it becomes the law of the land, well, uh, well, am I going to go and blow up a gay community? I mean, I'm, there's no connection. I'm I'm a follower of Jesus. I'm going to differ respectfully. Yeah. But how if I then say, hey, look, but I want to be protected. I don't want to be. I don't want to have to. Do something just like I don't feel, say, a gay T-shirt maker should have to make T-shirts that say homosexual practice is sinful. I don't think that should be imposed on them to say that the baker has to cake, bake the cake. I differ with that. So I want to preserve religious liberties and say, OK, I differ with you. If I can reverse this, I will. But right now it's, it is what it is. And I'm still going to treat you as my neighbor and my friend in the midst of our differences. Do you have a problem mm -hmm. with that? Because how we coexist right now is a big issue. Yeah, I think. um so what I was trying to say earlier is, so you, we, we now know that the, uh, the shooter was actually, the shooter was gay, most likely, right? Uh, he was on the gay, he was on a gay app, he, he had frequented the nightclub before, and, and I'm assuming he had sort of mental uh, disorder as well. And that, that's an assumption I'm making, it's not, it's not based in fact at all, but like, I think um, when you decide to pull the trigger and end a human life um, for... Uh, one reason or the other, you, uh, unless it's like to protect your family or unless it's to protect your country, um, it, there are different uh, reasons for why you may do that. But like in this case, you obviously have some sort of mental deficiency that um, thought that led you to feel that this was the right choice. So, but aside from that, um, the reason why I mentioned that he was gay is because there's this anti-homosexual um, rhetoric. There's this narrative everywhere, right? Um, and it, it's based off of religious doctrines, or and then it may be some sort of like, um, as you mentioned, some sort of social reasons for why you think homosexuality is possibly not the best practice. But um, this sort of this sort of narrative uh, makes it very difficult for people to accept themselves, for people to be happy in their own skin, for people to be happy with the. Um, the, uh, for people to be happy with what they want to be. Like, they can't, uh, if we're going to say that homosexuality, like, I, it, because I believe that homosexuality is not a choice and you're born that way, I, I don't believe that it's something you can change. So when I see this sort of negative rhetoric around um, uh, against homosexuals, I think that only um, further uh, escalates people into um, 
making irrational choices, irrational decisions, and then paired up with how easily accessible uh, weapons are, which is, I know, something that we are also uh, not going to agree on. And then on top of that, like with some sort of like mental deficiency, um, I think these sort of explosive, crazy things happen. I t- tell you what, um, got a break. First, I'm, I'm not a uh, member of the NRA, so I'm not going to debate the gun part with you. That's very secondary. But a couple questions for you when we come back, all right? And uh, one is, what if someone watched Young Turks and then wanted to go out and kill Christians? We need to confront and we need to hold people accountable for the toxic, murderous homophobia and transphobia that is continuously pumped into our culture. And the main source, the wellspring of that toxic homophobia and transphobia is religion. All right, that was the voice of Dan Savage. I would, I would assume that my guest, Hassan Piker of the Young Turks, agreed with what Dan said. So, Hassan, a couple of questions. Let me get these out, and then you can respond freely. We've got about eight minutes, so I, w- I want to give you as much time to respond as, as possible. And my goal in having you on was not to win a debate, but to have, have honest discussion. That's, that's, that's yeah. why we asked you to come on. And, and hopefully we can continue it in, in another setting. Okay, but uh, I get hate mail, uh, death threats, death wishes constantly simply by saying, listen, we love everyone. If, if there was going to be violence against a gay or lesbian person, I was there to have to, they have to get past me. But nonetheless, I believe kids should have a mom and dad. Nonetheless, I don't agree with, with, um, uh, two men marrying or two women marrying, etc. Uh, so there's nothing I say that's going to lead to, to an act of violence. It's it's quite the contrary. Yeah. And I've, I've been talking no, about this. Right. But I hear rhetoric against our side constantly. So my first thing would be, what if, say, well-meaning stuff on the Young Turks, some mentally unstable person watches that and they want to then turn around and attack us? I mean, is, is it what we believe that's the problem or the way we present things that's the problem? Um, I think the way we present things is, is definitely a big part of the issue. And also, I mean, obviously, I don't think you're making the argument that Christians are being persecuted at the same um, level that, uh, you know, the LGBT community is or um, certain minorities. I think that would be a disservice to say that, especially when Christians are being persecuted in other countries. Mm-hmm. Um, and that is, I mean, I don't know, I think that's a little bit more serious than the persecution that Christians may be facing in America. Sure. Now, having said that, I, I also want to absolutely make clear that I believe in the freedom of speech above all else. So I think that if someone has um, if someone has a different opinion than I do, whether that's anti-LGBT sentiment, um, I think that they're allowed to say that. I, I 100% uh, believe that. What I was referring to is these these rules and regulations that we set forward, set forth uh, that, um, that completely um like refusing like for example refusing for, um uh, giving someone the right to refuse to rent out their home to a homosexual couple now that is not very inclusive now i understand that there is some sort of religious freedom being protected in that instance but i think that that o- opens brain for uh bigotry that allows people to legally uh be bigots and i think that only promotes um this polarized uh this polarized exclusive culture where um uh, gay people don't feel protected gay people don't feel like they're a part of um whatever communities they live in especially if they live in like north carolina for example or if they live in um uh, mississippi tennessee and um and i think that i don't i don't believe that you would want gay people to feel that way it seems to me like you are uh, are more inclusive than others and that doesn't have anything to do with um the negative uh, narrative you see in the media. What I'm referring to, obviously, the the freedom of speech uh, protects up to a certain point. Obviously, if someone is out there going, let's kill all uh, homosexuals, just like the pastor you denounce, or if someone out there on my network, which would never happen, but if someone out there on my network was like, let's kill all Christians, obviously that's not not legal at all and, and, and inexcusable. Right. So, so let me let me interact and then come back with with another question. Uh, look, there the there are Christian bed and breakfast owners that say that double rooms can only be for for married couples, and so you can be heterosexual couple living together uh, for five years but not married. And if you have two separate names, driver's licenses, and you're not married, 
they won't they won't have you stay there. That's been their practice for years. And since they don't recognize homosexual marriage as marriage, they're just applying that same sexual ethic. So so once again, you know, the, the question is where these things, you know, happen very, very rarely in terms of these conflicts. But let's just go back to the issue of of. Okay, but, I way. mean, it, it's very similar, but it's very similar to uh, like, and I know you know I'm going to say this, but I mean that's very similar to Jim Crow laws in that instance. Then no. maybe I mean a, a lot of people, but I I do genuinely believe that because like I mean, yes, you can hide the fact. <sighs> well, 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 okay, tell, tell you what, if you're black, when did you come out as black? Uh, I mean, yeah, that's but, what but, I'm saying. You can but, hide the fact that you're black, but, right, but at, it's still at, something that you're born with. I mean, hide the fact that you're gay, but it's still okay, something but, but, that you're born with. But there's no... Okay, but so then, look, I, I'm not... I, I'll, I'll shout this as loud as I can. I'm not comparing pedophilia to homosexuality. Okay, I want to shout that out. But scientists okay. now say more and more that that uh, pedophilia is inborn, it's innate, it's immutable. You say, I don't, I don't care if it's innate, if it, it's immutable. It's wrong. In other words, you would still have another moral judgment... That would utterly condemn it as wrong, even if a scientist says it's innate and immutable. Or if someone beats you up and they say, hey, I have a violent gene. Scientists have found to have a violent gene. You don't care if you have a violent yeah. gene. It's, it's wrong. So the fact that someone is born a particular way says, even if they were, again, I don't believe there's reputable scientific evidence that anyone's born gay. But even if they were, that doesn't necessarily make it moral. You, you can't, you have to I, come at it from I, I understand, but homosexuality is not something that's wrong. You know uh-huh. what I mean? Like that's the that's the difference of opinion that you and I have in this instance. Uh, of course. And I think a lot more people, especially in my age group now, believe that uh, homosexuality is not a wrong thing. I think people of can just people are just certain they're they're a different way. They're born a different way. They're just they're just gay. They happen to be gay. They happen to appreciate the company of the same sex. Right. But your point is. That born that way or not, there's nothing inherently wrong with same-sex relationships, right? Yes, absolutely. Oh, okay. That's right, absolutely so, what I'm saying. Whereas pedophilia is not the same because, uh, like, like, homosexuality doesn't have the same implications on a child's development as pedophilia right, right. does. Homosexuality is completely different in that sense. F- fully or understood. Violence. You're, you're not infringing on anyone else's right um, when you're being gay, whereas... You are if you're going to be violent towards them, regardless of what your, um, you know, hereditary uh, disabilities or right. whatever, you know. I only raise that to say that you agree that the born that way argument does not necessarily carry moral weight, that the relationships themselves or their behavior itself needs to be evaluated separately from that. That's the only reason I raised that. And, and you did ex- explain that. Hey, listen, t- tell you what. If there is an opportunity for us to, to dialogue further in, in any setting, I'm, I'm happy to do it. The question is, if I'm utterly convinced that God's word is true and that the scriptures teach certain relationships are right and certain relationships are wrong. And I spent most of my life dealing with sin in the heterosexual church. I mean, it's only the last decade or so I focused on gay activist issues. Then how do we how do you have your freedom and I have my freedom side to side? We're, we're out of time, but that's. Obviously, the question to discuss, but I, I appreciate your spirit and tone in the midst of our disagreements, and hopefully we can talk further. All right. Thank you for having me. All right. You bet. Thanks.